Hi, my name is Christina and today I will be introducing you to HL7 interfaces, their impact in healthcare applications and departmental workflows. Also, I will provide you with a high-level explanation on how to map an interface, how the HL7 messages are structured, and what type of resources are often used as interface engines. The purpose of the protocol's creation is interoperability between systems, both main and ancillary. But first, let's start off with what is an HL7. HL7 stands for, for Health Level 7, and it is a standard that was named after the Community of Healthcare Subject Matter Experts Health Level 7 Incorporated, which collaborated to create standards for the exchange, management, and integration of electronic health information. The name was created to reference the seventh layer of the OSI model, also known as the application layer. The name indicates that HL7 focuses on application layer protocols for the healthcare domain independent of lower levels. The main purpose of the HL7 interface protocol is to have a structured content for electronic medical records and a real-time exchange of clinical data between systems. Hospitals and other healthcare provider organizations typically have many different computer systems or applications that could be used for anything from billing records to patient tracking. To be able to maximize the exchange of information for the purposes of both patient treatment quality and continuity and staff productivity. All these different healthcare applications use and should be able to talk to each other. The role of HL7 is to specify a number of flexible standards and guidelines in which these various applications can communicate. Let's try to visualize this information with a real life example. In this example, we're going to review how an HL7 works. Let's first talk about HL7 enabled applications. Meet Jane. Jane is a novice snowboarder, and on today's run, she suffered a fall, twisted her wrist, and would like to have this examined by a doctor. When she arrives at the hospital, she is asked to fill out paperwork for registration purposes, with information such as her name, date of birth, and all of her medical insurance details. This information is gathered by a registrar, and it is keyed into the hospital's health information system which in turn creates a patient record and issues an identifier, such as an account number or medical record number. This is placed on a patient's ID bracelet and given to the patient for identification purposes while the patient is in the facility. After a few minutes, it is Jane's turn to be called to see a doctor. During this consultation, the doctor takes a brief look at Jane's medical history and dictates information regarding the current consultation into a handheld device or a patient chart that will later be entered by physician's assistant into a patient's clinical record application. The final outcome of the consultation is that the doctor wishes to have the patient have an x-ray on her wrist and schedules a time and place for this x-ray using the radiology information system. Thanks to HL7, Jane did not have to fill out separate forms with her information to be entered into the radiology information system. Her doctor was able to easily view her chart with all her medical information and was able to schedule her for x-rays seamlessly without the need of additional time-consuming paperwork. HL7 enabled all these information systems or applications to interact with one another, freeing healthcare providers to actually focus on caring for the healthcare of their patients. Every time information needs to flow between systems, small text messages about specific events are generated in the application and sent out. It is what is referred to as an outbound message. Regardless of what type of event it is, for example, registration information, billing information, or the results of Jane's x-ray, a single message is sent out and an HL7 is a protocol utilized by these systems to understand this message and share the information. Now let's talk about interface engines for applications that are not HL7 enabled. There are also instances where there are applications that do not speak the language of HL7. 
I need an interface engine to be able to understand the messages sent out by other applications, sort of like a translator. These engines turn these messages into useful information, allowing the application to have interoperability, or in other words, a more seamless process so they can exchange information. When an integration engine sees a message, it can pull out all the important pieces of information and store it in a way that the applications can understand, like a database or a file. Also, when an engine sees a new record or result from the application, it can take the information and turn it into an appropriate HL7 message to be sent out to other applications for sharing, depending on their business needs. Before HL7 existed and all systems had the capability to be integrated, there was no standard method for sharing this information, and systems had to manually be notified or time-consuming and expensive custom interfaces needed to be built for that information to be able to come across each and every system that had a business use for that information. HL7 has not only been impactful because it is much easier, but it is also cheaper to connect these systems regardless of their design. For example, newer applications to legacy systems. So regardless of what systems you want to connect, this allows health healthcare workflows to be a lot more efficient than they were in the past, but more importantly it means that Jane will receive better quality of care. So to better understand what, what an HL7 message looks like, let's break the messages down into how they are composed. They are made up of a sequence of segments, and these segments serve as building blocks of HL7 messages. Each segment is located on its own line in the message and has specific purpose which groups rather than pieces of information. In HL7, there are a long list of pre-identified segments, and the way that these messages are pre-identified is a three-letter acronym at the beginning of the message. Like, for example, PID, which is included in patient identification information or MSH, which identifies who sent the message, where it's going, and what to expect inside the message. Then, if you look into the segments, you will see that it is further divided into fields, and these fields can contain simple data types like a string or a number, or they can contain subfields, which are more complex. The way that these fields and subfields are identified are a notation called delimiter characters. These delimiters tell us what notation was used to separate all the pieces of data in our segment. So if we want to build a particular field, we can put the segments that are separated by whatever predetermined delimiter was selected when the message was built. Fields are then broken down into components and then subcomponents. Subcomponents are used for data manipulation mostly. mostly. Adding, adding a value to a subcomponent and modify the value, value of the field. field. For, example, For example, if, if I had, I had a, first a first and last name into two separate, separate components, components. Last, last name would be made, made into a subcomponent to store, store them, in them in the same field. field. Or adding, or adding a 0 to an account, account number. Now how, now how can, can we map messages, messages in an in interface engine? engine? There are, there are various healthcare interface engines. However, in this example, we will be focusing on open links. Interface, interface are created, created and monitored, monitored in the, in the interface, interface database. database. On this, On this screen, screen, we have an, have an example, example of an inbound message, message and, and its statistics. Interface, interface are divided, are divided by, the by the type of data, of data they, they submit. submit. And here's, and here's an, an example, example of, of how they are created, created and monitored. monitored. On this, On this view, view, we have several, several interfaces coming from different, different application, application environments, environments, as well as, well as the individual statistics for one of the interfaces. And in this, and in this screen, screen, we can see how the messages and their delimiters are identified. During the During creation, creation of the interface, we store all the variables and data values mentioned previously, previously such, such as, as a delimiter. delimiter. Lastly, I wanted to provide some additional resources for those of you that are interested in looking um, at more information regarding HL7 interfaces. And um, I wanted to give special Thanks to Dr. Dada for the approval of this idea, George Rosello, Interface Engineer, for teaching me about HL7 interfaces, Todd Smith for sharing the video recording program, and my team for allowing me to have Sunday off to finish this video.